Hey guys, today I want to show you how you can get started with oil painting with the supplies that you'll need. You really don't need that many things, but the few categories of supplies that you do need are essential in order to maximize the potential of your artwork. The price range is going to vary a lot depending on what quality of products that you buy as well, but art supplies do come in many brands that can help accommodate whatever your budget is. Let's start off with the canvas. You're obviously going to need something to paint on, and so you can purchase one or make your own. Making your own takes more time, but you can of course customize the size of it if you are planning on making a very large painting. Me personally, I prefer the store bought ones which come in many sizes. They also vary in price range as well, where the most expensive ones are usually ones with thicker edges and the cheaper canvases have a thinner one. The cheapest ones are canvas boards. Those are great if you're doing lots of practice on a tight budget or teaching an art class. Let's talk about priming the canvas. The raw canvas material first needs to have gesso added to it to seal and protect it. This is an important first step in the painting process. Making sure the surface that you paint on is smooth is one of the reasons to do this. Another reason for gessoing is because oil paint can soak into the canvas and eventually break down the fibers, causing the painting to look worse or even start cracking. Priming the canvas creates a barrier between the paint and the canvas. However, most store-bought canvases today are already made with gesso on them, so you can skip the step if you want, but some artists like to add a second or even third coat of gesso to get a smoother surface to work on. Now let's talk about mounting the painting so you can have a comfortable experience working on it. You can do this in three different ways. Mounting it up on a table against the wall, hanging it up directly on the wall, or you can use an easel which would cost you the most. Me personally, I like to hang it up against the wall because this way you can also adjust the height where you have nails or screws put in at different increments so you can easily move the painting around at different levels. Easels can cost anywhere between $50 and $200 depending on the quality that you want. And if you like to paint outside, they are essential. So just find whatever that you're most comfortable with. So oil paints come in different varieties depending on what quality you're looking for. There's different levels you can find in stores, starting off at beginner, then student, and then professional. The price, of course, is going to match the level. However, it also depends on the color, too. Some are cheaper than others depending on what pigmentation and other ingredients are used. The cheaper ones can be great for practice in various paint studies. If you are on a tight budget, you can find an abundant supply of small paint packages where they have introductory sets of all the basic colors that come in really small tubes to get you started. Anyways, that's a quick intro to the paints. The next essential item is some type of palette. You can buy a palette board at any art or hobby store. You can also use palette paper as well, which is a high quality paper specifically made for this purpose. I prefer the paper because you could buy packs of multiple sheets, and you'd be surprised how quick the paint adds up on the palette over time, and cleaning the board is just such a hassle. However, if you do like to stand while painting or doing it outside with an easel, then getting a good palette is essential as well as having one with a comfortable grip. Let's talk about paintbrushes. Paintbrushes come in different shapes and sizes. However, I want to make it clear that there's no perfect brush that will make you a great painter. That's going to depend on your hand, eyes, and mind. The main two things to look for is the hair quality and the shape. With oil painting, you'll mainly want to get the ones with stiffer bristles, like pig hair, or there are some synthetic ones as well made these days. One brush that's commonly used is a flat brush. Flat brushes are mainly used for painting things with hard edges like buildings, trees, shapes, or textures where you want to have more definition in your brushing. The brush strokes can be more easily seen with these. Another main brush is the round. With this one, you have a better control over blending. You won't see the brush strokes as easily and this brush helps a lot with filling in gaps or color where you want to create a smooth surface. Round brushes are especially great when they are the smallest sizes as that's where you can use them for the most precise detail with painting lines, hair, or grass. The next type is the filbert. This one is probably the most versatile and commonly used, as it's kind of both flat and has a rounded edge to it. This could cover a good amount of areas with paint, but also can conceal any signs of brushing if you use it smoothly enough. This one and the round are excellent for painting portraits. The three brushes I just mentioned are the most used ones, and it really comes down to personal preference with which ones you want to stick to. The fan brush is kind of hit or miss in my opinion. I know a lot of landscape painters swear by this brush, using it for all kinds of interesting effects with textures, but to me, I don't really find myself using it too much. And there's one called the mop brush. 
This one is made specifically for blending, as the bristles are softer and they are more spread out. If you don't own one of these, it's okay. Another good alternative can be an acrylic brush with soft bristles, like a large round or flat. Another brush is called the Bright. It's just a shorter version of the flat brush. It's good for being more aggressive with moving the paint around the canvas, but if you own a flat brush, that could eventually turn into a Bright over time because the bristles shorten over time anyways from being used a lot. And last, there's one called the Dagger or the Angle Brush. I don't own one, but it's supposed to create some interesting effects as well, and some artists like to use it in different ways depending on how they handle it. So you can see how there's quite a few brushes you could choose from, but it does come down to preference and your own style of painting that will determine which ones to which you will gravitate the most. The next two items you need are a solvent and a medium. Solvents are what you clean the paint with, as this chemical is what washes out the oil paint off the brush. You can buy artist grade turpentine at any art or hobby store. The ones made these days come in an odorless form, but I would still be careful when using it because any solvent that thins out paint has toxic fumes, so painting in a ventilated area should be mandatory. I would also use a limited amount since it is pretty effective at washing out the paint without using too much of it. Let's talk about using painting mediums. Oil paint by itself can be difficult to use if you're working with a lot of detail. Mediums like linseed oil adds more wetness to your paint, so you can sharpen your brushing as well as mix your paint much easier. There's a multitude of different mediums you could use. Some could slow down the drying, others could quicken it, and this requires a whole other video about that. One mistake I used to make was that I used the solvent as my medium, since that does technically make the paint more wet. However, it destroys the pigment in the paint and dilutes the color, so whatever paint you're using becomes a fraction of the quality that it once was. This is why using mediums is important as they preserve or even enhance your paint quality. I'd say that linseed oil is a popular one that many artists use and is a good starting point. Another item, but in my opinion is optional, is the palette knife. Many artists use this a lot, with mixing the paint on the canvas or creating cool effects in the painting. You probably saw on TV how Bob Ross painted all those mountains with this tool, and so it's entirely up to you if you need it. My painting style is much slower and methodical, so I have no need for it. And last but not least, you'll need a rag or paper towel to wipe your brushes after you clean them. You'll be using this a lot because you're constantly going back and forth between the paints, canvas, and solvent to wash the paint off. And so that's a quick rundown of getting started with oil painting. From the supplies I mentioned here and how much it would cost, you can be looking at anywhere between $30 and $500. So it's entirely up to you on how much you want to invest into your artwork. It all depends on how serious you want to take this hobby or even turning it into a career. Anyways, let me know if you found this video helpful in any way. If you did recently start your painting journey, check out my video on how to paint landscapes right here. If you want something more advanced, check out this one on how to paint a landscape like Thomas Kincaid. Anyways, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.